the final question is, uh, after the Arab Spring, and anyone may jump in, uh, what will bring prosperity to the region? I, I think I'm, I'm, of the, I'm of the belief, uh, both as, a, as, a, as an individual and as, a, and as someone who's looked at this question over the last 10, 15 years, that societies that are better governed, that are well governed, have the best hope of ensuring sustainable long-term prosperity. I side with that premise. So if the Arab Spring translates into democracies that bring together good governance, and I think we know what, what, we, what we mean by that. It's not just the freedom of speech, but participatory elections. It's the checks and balances, the, the act of accountability, the exercise of power, how authority is discharged, institutions that function and function well, if those are the outcomes of the Arab Spring, and I sure hope that that's the case, we, sure, we cannot do worse than what we have done already and what we have achieved in the last 30 years. So if that is the case, I think the countries that are going through this change are likely, uh, with time, to set in foundations that will bring about long-term <coughs> economic prosperity. And I go back again to link it with something that was said earlier, the first question. Yes, in the short term, there will be a lot of instability, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of upheaval. Things will not go well. Everybody wants higher wages. Everyone, wants, everyone has higher expectations. But with time and to the extent that we can manage this transition and set in motion and put foundations for good governance, I think the countries will reap the benefits of long, uh, more sustainable uh, and more guaranteed long-term prosperity for, for their people and also for their neighbors and I think for the world at, at large. Go ahead, please. I think we have to ask ourselves, I mean, is democracy a means to an end, or is, it a, a mean, or is it an end by itself? Is it just the right thing to do regardless of outcomes? So what happens if new democracies don't perform as well on economic indicators? Is, does that make us less supportive of democracy? Um, and I think what we also have to remember, I mean, it's perhaps one of the ironies of the Arab Spring, that what were the two real economic success stories in the Arab world, at least according to the IMF and the World Bank and all of that, <coughs> Egypt and Tunisia, the two countries that fell to revolution. Egypt, the last five years under Mubarak, had between 5 to 7 percent of annual GDP growth. And it was getting accolades from international institutions for being the best place to do business in the Arab world. People were saying the same things about Tunisia. So when we talk about economic growth and economic development, what are we really talking about? Okay, so what are the other uh, factors that need to be addressed? Please be optimistic. Oh, uh, <laughs> the last I note. I, I was going to be, to be, I would be optimistic, but you know, you suppressed me now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm extremely optimistic. There are two models of economic prosperity, which is the minds of many people in the Arab world. The Chinese one, which means you know, economic reforms, without political reforms, and the Syrian tried to adopt this kind of model, and it didn't work for them, and you can see the outcome. And, you know, economic reforms which, or prosperity which based on democracy, which we are hoping for now. I believe now with, when those dictators or dinosaurs like Hosni Mubarak, I don't know why he actually accommodated uh, or accumulated about $9 billion what, what he's going to do with him now in prison. So anyway, so once we get rid of corruption, once we have a good governance, for example, once we have transparency, once we have accountability, I think this will create the best environment for investment. And this investment, we shouldn't go to IMF, honestly. We shouldn't go to uh, the World Bank. We should come here. We should go to, to Libya. We should go to you know, uh, oil producing country. We should go to Arab sovereign funds. We have sovereign funds which has trillions of dollars. One thing Gallup uh, discovered in our research, and this is just preliminary, but there is an empirical link between social trust and entrepreneurship. So the more people trust their community to be fair, to, that they can trust a business partner, that, um, that the contracts will be honored, the more likely they are to want to start a business, the more likely you know, you'll create jobs and so forth. So there is a link between good governance 
social cohesion and economic development. And I, I, I go back to everything everyone has said. As Egypt's uh, GDP and Tunisia's GDP per capita was growing by 5 to 7 percent, th their people's life evaluation index was plummeting. I mean, the lines are uh, remarkable. They're literally going like this. And it was at that bottom point that, that we found you know, the, the eruption. So it wasn't that the economic growth wasn't happening. It was that it was, it was not being simply, it was not, people did not have access to it. They, they lacked the mechanisms that normally a population has to benefit from macroeconomic growth. They couldn't start a business. They thought that cr corruption was rampant. So all of these things, if they were fixed by authentic good governance, that macroeconomic growth could translate into prosperity.